Welcome to an introduction to the SWIFT feature, Inclusive Academic Instruction. I'm Dan. And this is Allison. As you'll recall, this domain is one of five evidence-based concepts that, when implemented together, transforms teaching and learning for success of all students. Multi-tiered system of supports has two features, inclusive academic instruction and inclusive behavior instruction. Today, we are exploring inclusive academic instruction. Inclusive academic instruction is about three big ideas. First, providing strong instruction for all students, which includes universal design for learning, differentiating and flexible grouping based on student need. Second, providing supplemental supports as needed to ensure achievement of all students. And third, using data to guide instructional decision making. Importantly, inclusive academic instruction is about using data to guide instructional decisions at all tiers of support. Next, let's look at what research says about the value of inclusive academic instruction. We know that a tiered system of support for inclusive academic instruction across all grade levels is most often supported with research related to supplemental systems and literacy. A strong body of research supports improved outcomes for students with and without disabilities when practices around UDL and differentiation principles are applied. A multi-tiered system of support for reading is associated with significantly improved outcomes across all grade levels. For students with and without disabilities, we know that they benefit from universal design for learning and differentiation practices. How are we going to create or strengthen our existing academic structures? Developing a strong tiered system has many planning and practice implications. Let's unpack these five practices that are recommended to get started. We intentionally mirror the practices for getting started for both behavior and academic because they're the foundational practices for developing a multi-tiered system of support. Practice number one, identify a comprehensive assessment system. Practice number two, create and utilize teams to engage in data-based planning. Practice number three, provide universal academic supports for all students. Practice number four, create a system for providing targeted interventions and supports. And practice number five, create a process for providing individualized interventions and supports. Practice number one, identify a comprehensive assessment system. Data play an important and integral role in a tiered system for academic supports. Planning and reflection around an assessment system will have a team evaluate the degree to which the school has technically sound screening and progress monitoring tools for both reading and math, and any additional assessments that allow, promote, deeper understanding of skill strengths and needs. Select and utilize a reliable and valid universal screener. When selecting a screener, consider the following. What universal screening tool is most appropriate for the school's population? How does the team use this data to think about core instruction? How does the team use this data in addition to teacher observation to determine who may need additional assistance? Select reliable and valid progress monitoring tools that can be used to guide intervention decisions. Progress monitoring is an essential component that occurs daily in the classroom as teachers watch, listen, and reflect on student growth. In a tiered system, progress monitoring refers to the technically sound tools that give us a motion picture over time of progress in particular reading or math domains. Make sure to identify a range of assessments that can be used to guide instructional decisions. Data, in addition to screening and progress monitoring data, may be needed to ensure interventions and instructional supports match specific student need. This data could include observation, fluency assessments, or individual reading inventories, among others. Have you identified a range of assessments designed to, assist, to assess domain-specific strengths and skill sets? Practice two, create teaming structures and engage in database planning. It's important that a team review screening and progress monitoring data. So organize school teams to review screening and progress monitoring data. This team should include both grade level and specialized educators. 
let's discuss who is or could be responsible for reviewing screening and progress monitoring data at your school. Next, it's important to schedule time for teams to meet regularly to review students' screening and progress monitoring data. Then create a process to analyze data at the school, grade, and individual student level. Database planning occurs at the school, the grade, and the student and family levels. When thinking about database planning at the school level, a representative team should be looking at school-wide data at least three times per year and getting a clear picture about where we are and engaging in planning that accentuates what is working well and reflects so that efforts can be strengthened. Implementing the plan and continuously reflecting on what we are learning looking for visible evidence that we are on track and questioning in a way that learning and improvement is a continuous cycle. What is our current reality? How can we strengthen our efforts? What are we learning? How will we know if our plan is working? What are our results telling us? At the grade level, the cycle is the same, but it allows a representative grade level team to examine, reflect, and build from data conversations that will strengthen efforts related to their grade level standards. This team will likely also be reviewing the progress of particular groups so that small group instruction can stay flexible and utilize resources efficiently. When individual student planning is warranted, the team will be extended to include the student, their family, and possibly other individuals who are connected with or serving the student. For example, this may include a daycare provider, mental health case manager, counselor, or de deputy juvenile officer. At the heart of database planning, regardless of the level, remember to create a shared understanding driven by data that is focused on using collective expertise to strengthen our efforts and focused on evaluating the impact of our work in healthy and supportive ways. Practice number three, create universal academic supports for all students. This practice is all about core instruction. Reflect on what is taught, how it is taught, how much time is allocated, and how the principles of universal design for learning and differentiation address student need. Identify research-based core curriculum and materials. When planning universal supports, it's important to make sure the core curriculum that all students have access to is strong and supported by research. When planning universal supports, consider what we want to be present and consider consistent across all learning environments. The work of, the De of DeFour provides a common mantra for thinking about core instruction. They frame essential questions such as, what does the team expect and want all students to know and be able to do? Are learning objectives clear? Do students understand the learning objectives? Identify research-based instructional practices such as explicit instruction or reciprocal teaching. Let's discuss how are research-based instructional practices identified? Are they aligned with student learning goals? Build a master schedule that reflects expectations of time allocation to core instruction. Use a fidelity tool to assess the implementation of universal supports within a multi-tiered system of support. Practice four, create a system for providing targeted interventions and supports. A strong tiered system of support allows us to design our system that makes possible the time, resources, robust practices, and monitoring that are needed in order for the multitude of needs to be met in schools, and importantly allows our resources to be used effectively and efficiently while not removing important ownership from the student's first and primary teacher. Create a matrix of available research-based interventions, like the SWIFT tiered intervention matrix. Think about interventions we have access to that can be used for small group instruction. Interventions do not necessarily need to be purchased, but we are looking for those strategies that have demonstrated strong outcomes. Then, schedule time for providing targeted interventions. Think about how time is allocated for each grade level so students who do show the need for supplemental support have access to interventions without teachers borrowing or stealing time from resources in the building. Consider the following. How does this process look to ensure interventions are matched appropriately? How is data integrated into what is seen and heard in the classroom or in small group instruction? How are students included in this process? For instance, just because two students are learning English, they could have very different learning profiles or needs for interventions. Likewise, two students who have IEPs need to be matched with groups that closely mirror their particular needs. Then, create recommendations for the frequency of interventions and progress monitoring data collection. 
Some interventions will require more frequent implementation and progress monitoring. Remember to create a continuum of interventions so that the frequency of the intervention matches the student's needs. It's important to determine decision rules for when interventions will be initiated, changed, or discontinued. You also need to make sure procedures are in place to monitor whether interventions are being implemented with fidelity. Practice 5. Create a process for providing individualized interventions and supports. Assemble a team to develop an individualized support plan. This team needs to include the student and family and may involve planning with other individuals and or agencies. Evaluate the different teaming structures in place around individual students and the degree to which the process it involves appropriate members, the degree to which the process results in plans that are robust and adequate at addressing the individual needs for core and intervention support, and how the process appropriately assists teams when other actions are warranted. Think about how often and how long we do things. Think about intentional changes to the learning environment that may be helpful for the student, and think about the changes that can be made to the instructional delivery, instructional activities, or instructional materials that would help accelerate student learning. Plan individualized supports that will enable meaningful engagement, accessibility, and progress in the general education curriculum. Develop guidance to assist teams in understanding when to consider further evaluation. Use a fidelity tool for measuring implementation of individual supports. Just as we've talked about using a tool and process for evaluating our core instruction and tiered systems, we want to do the same when it comes to our individualized planning process. Overall, a strong, inclusive academic instruction framework is important because it outlines the level of supports required for success for each student. We just covered five practices that are good launching points for creating a strong, tiered system of support for inclusive academic instruction, and we covered a lot, so let's debrief as we think about our own district or building. Debrief and discuss. Why is creating a tiered system of support for inclusive academic instruction important? Discuss what strengths are already in place. Discuss opportunities for growth. Then set goals and next steps.